Victoria's opposition leader insists his party is united despite some members of his shadow cabinet welcoming two senior staff departures. Victoria political reporter Simon Love joins us live. Simon, it appears John Pursuto is under internal party pressure once again. Look, he is, and it's particularly come from the Nationals, which is the coalition partner within the state uh, coalition here in Victoria. My understanding is that over recent weeks, the National Party has raised concerns, as well as some Liberal MPs, particularly on the backbench, around how the Leader of the Opposition officer's Office has been operating. Now, yesterday it was announced two senior staff would be leaving the office. Of course, this announcement coming a day after the Dunkley by-election. John Pesciutto, after a shadow cabinet meeting this morning, has stated that he's confident, he still has the confidence of his party room and particularly his shadow ministers. Is your party united? Uh, yes, we're, we're, we're a party that's working to provide the Victorian people with the alternative they need. I'll just run you through who's departed the office of the Leader of the Opposition. His Chief of Staff, Rodrigo Pintos Lopez, who is also the longtime partner of Federal Member for Flinders, Zoe McKenzie. Rod uh, resigned yesterday as well. Uh, the Director of Communications for the Leader of the Opposition's office, Nick Johnston, who's a very experienced media operator, having worked at a number of companies, including the supercars as well, uh, the Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry most recently. Now, when those appointments were announced 12 months ago, John Pesciuto said that uh, they would be helping lead him into the 2026 state election campaign. But yesterday, in a press release, John Pesciuto stressed that they were only going to come on for 12 months to help him set up the office, and now they've decided to go back to the private sector. Former MP for Ripon, Louise Staley, is now John Pesciuto's new chief of staff. She lost the seat of Ripon after a redistribution meant that seat just went over to Labor at the last state election. Louise Staley recently went for pre-selection in the northeastern metropolitan region for the Liberal Party. She was unsuccessful there, also unsuccessful in going for the state directorship of the Victorian Liberal Party, but she's been working in the leader's office and will now be his chief of staff. I've got far more issues around the government's failures and worrying about what's happening in John's office. People leave jobs all the time for lots of reasons. Are you pleased about the changes? I think, you know, renewal is always good. How long do you think you'll last as leader? Uh, until the election, then I'll become Premier. It's I get on with um, whoever's on the, in the staff and that's my job. Will be there at the end of the year? Probably more likely to be there than you guys. OK, so that was a number of Shadow Cabinet uh, ministers or spokespeople arriving at the Shadow Cabinet meeting this morning uh, where John Pesciuto uh, says he has them united around his strategy. Interesting response, particularly from Matthew Guy uh, to journalists as he arrived. Uh, but here was John Pesciuto talking about Louise Staley's appointment. Louise is not there to run a popularity contest. She's there as Chief of Staff. And she, like myself and all of our colleagues, want to give Victoria good government. This has derailed the opposition's momentum heading into another parliamentary sitting week. Uh, Kieran, I've been covering state politics here on Spring Street for five years. I've seen five people go through that office as a communications director, four now as a chief of staff. So it's a bit of a revolving door when it comes to the Liberal Party, but John Pesciuto hoping that this team will lead him through to 2026. And what have you picked up in the, uh, the state area and the people you've been speaking to in response to the result of the Dunkley by-election, Simon? Well, I was just talking to John Pesciuto about that. He seems quite encouraged by the result, uh, particularly for the Liberal Party in the swing towards, or at least away from the federal government. The state party want to go after outer suburban seats, and that would include some of those state seats that correlate with Dunkley such as Frankston and Carrum. These are areas we would know uh, in, in politics as the shifting sand belt of southeastern Melbourne. But it seems uh, that the, the party elders think that's perhaps where the Liberal Party in the state sense can start to pick up first, and then they could go after some out, more outer suburban seats, such as 
uh, ones that correlate with the federal seat of McEwen in Melbourne's north and as well out to the east. Uh, they'd be looking at a seat such as uh, uh, that correlates with the state seats of uh, Pakenham as well. So, look, I think the state party quite... Uh, you know, bullish about the expectations, the lessons out of Dunkley. Of course, Labor won that by-election, so they can't really claim anything out of it. But certainly many state members and MPs went down to be on the booths on Saturday and they feel a little bit of a boost going in. But I dare say a bit of that uh, feeling was derailed by yesterday's announcement from the Leader of the Opposition's Office. Simon Love, thanks.